folks, my name's Lance Spitzner, and I am a SANS instructor. My specialty and passion is helping organizations with the human side of cybersecurity. Now, I've been in cybersecurity for over 25 years now. And on the first half, I really focused on the technical side. So like many of you, I have a lot of experience in the technical controls and technical ways to approach cybersecurity. But in the last half of my career, about the past 10 or so years, I've really focused on the human side because I feel that is where we can make the biggest difference. Think about it. In today's world, the human is the primary attack vector. In fact, for the past four years, the Verizon DBIR has identified that people are involved in over 70 to 80% of all breaches. And that's been consistent for the past four years. So cybersecurity is no longer just a technical challenge, but also a human challenge. And we really need to start addressing both. And that is why I'm so excited to share with you the release of this year's annual SAN Security Awareness Report. Very much inspired by the Verizon DBIR and the Verizon team, this report is a data-driven report that focuses on the human side of cybersecurity. And the whole purpose of this free report is to enable you to make data-driven decisions on how to better manage your human risk. So we're not just providing a bunch of fun, interesting facts, but action items and lessons learned that you can apply immediately to your organization. So I just want to highlight a couple of those key findings. So first and foremost, one of the most interesting things is we call the report the SAN Security Awareness Report, and you'll hear me commonly use the term security awareness, but we're already saying, seeing in this field, when it comes to managing human risk, people are using all sorts of different terms. Some people call their program the Behavior and Culture Program, Security Training and Education, Security Engagement and Influence, or we're even seeing organizations call the individuals and their programs the Human Risk Officer or the Human Risk Management Program. So first, we're less concerned what you call your program. Is it security awareness, behavior, culture, engagement, influence, communications, human risk? What we are focused on and concerned about is enabling you to approach and manage the human side of cybersecurity. Security awareness is no longer just about that annual computer-based training. It's all about engaging, training, and enabling your workforce to exhibit secure behaviors. And it's no longer just about prevention, but detection and response. Not only the human firewall, but the human sensor. So a couple of key findings I just wanted to share with you for this report. First, it's no longer just one individual. If you truly want to manage your human risk, you need to have multiple people on your team dedicated to the human side of cybersecurity. One of my biggest frustrations is a lot of times people will declare the human is the weakest link. If only people did what we told them, on and on blaming people. And yet when you look at the security team, there might be 50 people on the security team and out of those 50, 49 are focused on the technology side and maybe half of one person is focused on the human side. And then we wonder why people continue to be the primary attack vector. So one of the very first things that this report identifies is that the organizations that we see that have the most mature programs that are most effectively managing their human risk, it's just not one random person assigned responsibility for the overall program, or even worse, one person part-time assigned responsibility, the organizations most effectively managing their human risk have a team of people dedicated to it. Three, four, five, in some case, six, seven. How many should you have? Well, it depends on the organization size, how global you are, the industry, but we recommend at least three full-time employees 
effectively managing your human risk. Now, these don't have to be security experts. People coming or approaching on the human side can have all sorts of backgrounds. I'm a history major, English majors, specialties in communication, engagement, training, organizational change. In fact, sometimes having those human skills are more important than having security skills because, and this is the second point, whoever is in charge of managing your human risk, security awareness, security culture, security behavior, they need to be part of the security team. If your security awareness, culture, behavior, whatever you want to call it, reports to human resources, reports to legal, reports to audit, then you're going to be compliance focused because you're just siloed and focused on checking the box. But if that human risk team is part of your overall security team, then they can work with the security operations center, work with the incident response team, work with cyber threat intelligence to help identify, hey, what are our top human risks? Hey, what are the TTPs that the latest cyber threat actors are using to target our workforce. Hey, incident response, what's the biggest drivers of incidents that we've seen in the past? By having your security awareness team, or whatever you call, actively partnering with the rest of your security team, you can better identify and manage your human risk. That's why your security awareness team doesn't need to be hardcore technical security experts that you already have that hardcore technical experts on the rest of your security team. What your security awareness behavior culture team is to ne needs to do, take that wealth of info from the rest of your security team, translate that to the human side, then engage, train, and enable your workforce to be more secure. So one of the key takeaways we've learned, if you wanna truly manage your human risk, Invest in it by growing your team. This is a people problem. People are the solution. Yes, technology dramatically helps, but we can only go so far in tech. We need to go into the human side. Now, one of the other key findings we have found is for the security awareness, behavior, and culture teams out there, when you're talking to the security team, when you're talking to leadership, don't talk in terms of what you're doing. Don't go running around and saying, hi, my name's Lance. I'm the security awareness officer. And we're doing all these great things. Why, we last week we had a guest speaker. Next week we're going to kick off a big interactive gamified capture the flag. The following week we've got some awesome micro videos, then maybe a little bit of escape room. When you keep talking in terms of what you're doing, that's all great stuff, engaging and training. But quite often it sounds like, we are in the entertainment business. So instead of talking in terms of what you're doing, talk in terms of why you're doing it. Hey, leadership, my name's Lance, and I'm in charge of our security awareness program. Did you know that last year, 78% of all of our incidents were driven by people in our workforce? People are our greatest risk because they are now the primary attack vector. My job is to dramatically reduce that risk by engaging, training, and enabling our workforce to be more secure so we can make the latest use of our technology to include supporting our new digital transformation initiative. See the difference? By talking in terms of what you're doing, manage the human risk, you're far more likely to get support. All right, folks, that report has lots of other great information to include compensation rates for security awareness professionals, how much the average salary is, and what you can do to increase yours. Thank you so much. Catch you in cyberspace.